Before I start, I would like to request the member of the audience to post in their questions uh, during the session to all the panelists uh, on the right side of the screen in the dialog box, Q&A dialog box. Our next session will revolve around the theme, EdTech and Digital Skills to Maximize Learning Outcomes. The panelists are Ishita Agrawal, Program Director, Atal Innovation Mission, Niti Aayog, Geeta Gurnani, Lead, Microsoft Modern Workplace, Microsoft, Ruchi Anand, Director, Talent and Learning Solutions, LinkedIn India, Bhaskar Gandhavadi, Head of Training and Certification, ServiceNow, Saurabh Saxena, Chief Operating Officer, Scalar Academy, Mohit Jain, Co-Founder and CEO of Rocket Skills. The moderator of this session is Venkatesh Sarvasiddhi, who is Senior Head Industry Partnership at National Skill Development Corporation. In his role, he is heading Digital Skills, Innovation, Industry Partnerships, and CSR engagements in building the policy and framework for skilling mission in India. He also heads eSkill India under the Digital India Initiative to empower the youth. May I now request Venkatesh to introduce the panelists and begin the session. Over to you, Venkatesh. Thank you so much, uh, Ishita. Hope you can, uh, all of us, uh, all of you can hear me. Yes, Venkatesh, loud and clear. Thank you, thank you. Yes. So, First of all, I think uh, this is a very interesting uh, junction uh, about to celebrate our Independence Day uh, tomorrow. And uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful occasion uh, to set across the initiatives around skill, education, and the collaborations that can, we can bring across the industry, uh, right from large MNCs to uh, engaging and emerging startups uh, to organizations like the National Skill Development Corporation, which is an apex body in the skilling ecosystem. So I take this opportunity to welcome all the panelists. We have uh, Ms. Ishita Agrawal. She's the program director for AIM, Niti Ayog, uh, Mr. Bhaskar. He heads the training and certifications at ServiceNow. And we also have with us uh, the privilege of having uh, Ms. Geeta uh, Gurnani, the lead for Microsoft Modern Workplace for Microsoft India. Ruchi Anand the, from LinkedIn. She is the director of talent and learning solutions. And Saurabh Saxena. Uh, you know, from Scalar Academy, an emerging startup in the coding and the deep technology space, the chief operating officer of Scalar joining us. And also the young entrepreneur, Mohit, is the founder and CEO for Rocket Skills. So uh, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us. So we will start this, uh, you know, we will have a kind of uh, very interactive panel and uh, you know audience feel free to pose your questions towards the end we would love to take those questions and have them you know scheduled to the relevant panelists to answer uh, so to begin with you know uh, we have seen very interesting phase uh, you know of digitization at least in the covid times we have seen everybody is pushed into that space you know we were transforming you know and the journey was happening but in the last one and a half year, suddenly things have changed to that level that the, all the physical workloads have come to stand still. And there's a lot of digital interventions and digital skilling across organizations, across workplaces, across our skilling ecosystems, which have happened. And uh, today we would love to understand and engage with our audience to understand, uh, you know, to, with our panelists, to, where are those interventions, how those interventions led to interesting disruptions in the last one and a half year, and how are we plan to go about? So to start with uh, Ishita, Ishita Agrawal from the Niti Aayog, you know, can you tell us about the AIM and ATL, which is creating on, young entrepreneurs' dream into reality, which is actually pushing more of a uh, job creator kind of an ecosystem than job seeker, and various initiatives like your incubation centers in colleges, and uh, what are you doing uh, to empower the youth ecosystem using your uh, Atal Innovation Mission? Absolutely. Thank you for uh, inviting me, Venkatesh. And it's a very, very interesting uh, panel. I see very, uh, you know, very interesting discussion ahead. Um, to briefly introduce Atla Innovation itself for, uh, for the audience. Uh, Can I request the uh, rest of the audience, uh, rest of the participants who are not speaking to be on mute? Thank you so much. Thank you. So, like I was saying, that an innovation mission has been set up by the government of India. And it has been uh, given the mandate to uh, become the umbrella body for innovation and entrepreneurship in the country. So, what we do is we have various interventions across the innovation value chain 
to be able to influence young minds and uh, you know uh, uh, the, the demographic dividend of our country to become innovators and create a mindset for being a job creator and not a job seeker to give you an example at a very young age um, the lab has been established in school these labs are innovation work areas in school and they are outfitted with uh, cutting edge technologies there's a 3d printer there are robotics kits there are brain boards raspberry pis um, you know things like that and all these things are accessible to young children the objective is to help the young mind think about technology like the new cutting edge thing yeah and come up with uh, prototype solutions for challenges that the students around their communities around their homes and their schools and so on and so forth and the students actually get the hands on experience in developing small robotic uh, equipment uh, projects so that they think will help them solve those challenges in the community as a result in students the kids are prepared for becoming innovators as they grow up so they are uh, you know uh, the adls are actually preparing the children to become they are preparing the workforce of tomorrow they are preparing the uh, you know uh, children to gain some very very essential 21st century skill sets skills like design thinking structured problem solving teamwork collaboration uh, there are modules that are being introduced on artificial intelligence uh, coding uh, coding on uh, coding for games on mobile so on and so forth as a result of which and then there are also modules on entrepreneurship uh, all these things give the kids the confidence that they can become innovators to begin with and in the future entrepreneurs and therefore job creators so at an early stage and the atls are set up in schools from grade 6 to grade 12 so at a very early stage there is a mindset which is gradually being instilled in the children that they can become innovators and entrepreneurs so it's it's a part of their culture it's a part of their growing up and you know so we hope that by the time they become mature adults uh, they are uh, innovation is very it's a part of their it's ingrained in them it's a part of their growing up it's a, it's it's like a second habit to them it comes very naturally to them similarly at a higher education level uh, in colleges universities and uh, industry also by the way atl innovation mission is setting up business incubators these incubators and uh, uh, aics as we call them they they are uh, they are uh, sort of funded and they are created in such a way that they can help early stage startups to stand on their own so india has immense youth and uh, you know our our uh, our young generation is so talented and they're so bright bright minds all of these people deserve an opportunity to 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 be able to demonstrate their creative potential to become entrepreneurs and uh, to uh, to be a place where they can uh, you know sort of leverage on their entrepreneurial zeal and so when these um, enthusiastic young people have an idea about creating an enterprise and they need the guidance they need the connect with investors they need the basic office setup to be able to take their uh, uh, enterprises forward that's when the aics come into the picture and give them that critical support which help them sail through the various valleys of death that a typical startup would face in the initial stages and in the journey become sustainable and profitable enterprises and therefore the youth are also encouraged to become job creators instead of job seekers a lot of uh, premium institutions in the country have also also um, uh, you know they are doing their bit in pushing this forward so they have created the um, incentives for youth to become entrepreneurial first so if um, uh, after they complete their engineering or after they complete their graduation they can take a two year sabbatical try their hands at an entrepreneurship uh, join the incubator um, try a, try doing a startup and if it doesn't work some of these in premier institutions are accepting or letting students come back and sit for placements two years or three years later so the youth of the today of today is being given all the support to become job creators which is really the need of the country right now and i pause here for now
Yeah, I think thanks, uh, Ishita. I had an opportunity, in fact, to visit some of them. And I have seen uh, extremely interesting work going on, uh, even in schools in rural places where you have set up adult tinkering labs. Uh, this is an, I think this is an, uh, you know, when we were in schools, we never had those uh, tinkering labs. And today I can see uh, kids experimenting this either with, you know, things like robotics or drones or, you know, uh, you know, learning coding at an early stage to empower these. I think this is becoming very interesting, even in the national education uh, new plan, you know, coding is part of from class six onwards as a mindset change there. And interesting thing to note is India has almost a 1.65 million schools. Uh, interestingly, that is four times more number of schools than what China has. So, you know, if we do well and at the bottom of the pyramid, you know, if we can create those structures extremely well, there would be a new phase and a new development that will happen. And India will become more of a job creator. We are seeing, uh, we have seen that with Zomato's IPO, it got really well. And now there are a line of IPOs coming up from all of these are young founders below the age of 30. In fact, we have some of them today also in our forum. So we will get to them in a while. So moving on to uh, Bhaskar from, uh, you know, ServiceNow. Uh, Bhaskar, you guys have been expanding majorly. You have your development centers in Hyderabad and you're also hiring. Uh, what is the kind of an industry and academia gap you're seeing? And how are you filling in that gap from a service now point of view? You know, do you have any platforms, any, uh, you know, a, a online academies which are linked to service now, uh, which is also becoming part of students' curriculum? Are you doing any curriculum adoptions? If you can throw some light around that, especially from a higher education perspective. Bhaskar, I think you're on mute. I'm sorry, Vinkesh. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Vinkesh. Uh, good evening. Uh, I'm really, really incredibly honored to get this opportunity to interact with you all. Great opportunity to be part of this uh, session. Vinkesh, when you started, you, you, you touched upon a point called digital skills or digital transformation, right? So we, in the IT industry, uh, globally, every 10 years, we see some kind of changes that are happening. You know, we've seen probably 10 years back, we, we, we spoke about uh, cloud adaption, um, cloud computing, cloud applications. Right now, I think digital transformation remains the opportunity for this generation. And in the current era, organizations are under tremendous pressure to innovate faster, to reduce cost, to enhance productivity, or probably to meet their customer needs because um, you know they're not able to really do it or depend on manual uh, forms. Competition has really become steep across the industries. Companies are embracing digital workflows. And as you rightly said, digitization is the only answer. We have seen a lot of uh, non-IT companies also embracing, uh, you know, digitalization or, di uh, or a digital transformation. And uh, I mean, in fact, I've read that, you know, with the things that are opening up, close to about $8 trillion would be invested in digital transformation. And India, in fact, has become a digital capabilities hub of the world with, I guess, about 70, 75% of global digital talent is present in our country. Now, ServiceNow as an organization is the control tower of this digital transformation that we are looking at. We basically are a cloud computing platform organization that helps companies uh, manage digital workflows on a day-to-day -day, you know, basis for the enterprise companies. In fact, the baseline of the company that we have, we call it as uh, we make work work better for people. In fact, it's basically a one platform, one architecture, one data model kind of a company. And uh, um, now the STEM students that, that we talked about are basically expected to solve these changes uh, from ServiceNow or from the, we call it as training and certification organization. We've invested uh, hugely onto a platform called uh, Now Learning Platform, which basically is the epicenter for uh, all the learning and the recognition experience that users would be able to access. And they can access just by creating their profile, they can access the full range of training content, the certification, the badges, hands-on practice, simulators, and, and I mean, this is open to any working professional or a college student. They would be able to discover what should they learn and increase their value and build their careers on ServiceNow platform. Now, uh, from, the, from the content perspective, um, since we're talking about digital transformation, we're talking about solving um, 
the manual problems, uh, especially in the enterprise world, we have these courses called uh, IT service management, IT operations management, IT business management, IT asset management. These are the courses that the students would be able to take and to really bridge the gap you know, between the demand and, and uh, uh, supply and actually provide in a meaningful employment to the students we have um, you know invested a lot on the curriculum adoption we are looking at universities and colleges where we would want to go and talk to them and integrate this curriculum into their semester probably third year first semester third year second semester and try to see how do we build the ecosystem for uh, service now developers and and the primary reason being you know there's a huge huge demand for uh, uh, service now skills in the country uh, in fact you know if you log on to nokri.com you will find at least 10 to 15 pages only on ServiceNow jobs, which could be as low as two to you know four years or four to seven years kind of thing. We are trying to empower uh, you know girl students as well to excel in technology skilling. We've got a you know independent um, program ex exclusively for girl students to develop their potential and primarily to, to fulfill the gap in uh, gender diversity orientation. Thank you. That's so interesting. In fact, for all the audience who are present today, whether they are students, they are studying in any colleges. So the the way we have structured this uh, entire forum is to ensure that they listen to various leaders and also start looking out for these opportunities. As Baskar was saying, there are plenty of opportunities with service now. You know, students across various streams can look out for these opportunities. Thanks, Baskar, and also good to know that you are program is also focused around diversity uh, you know talking about this topic there's a very interesting insight uh, which we realized you know we are talking about about a 5 trillion economy uh, and we are we will be very soon a 5 trillion economy uh, but if we get one third of the female labor force back into the ecosystem we will be we will be a 30 trillion economy that's the power of you know in fact we see this uh, you know forum also today has many uh, women leaders uh, they would appreciate the fact and all of these organizations are doing a great stuff in terms of di driving diversity. Uh, moving on on the same thing uh, to an organization which believes in diversity and does a lot of work, Microsoft. So Geeta, you know, Gurnani who joins us, she's the country head uh, for Microsoft Teams. Uh, we want to know from you, you know, Microsoft Office has become more like an, an important skill in day-to-day -day life, whatever you're doing in whichever organization you are. Uh, you know, can you let, brief us a little bit about the opportunities young students can gain uh, by skilling themselves on Power BI apps around teams and stuff like that, uh, which can be right, quite beneficial. Uh, in interest of others, I would really request other speakers who are not speaking to be on mute. Thank you. Uh, to you, Gita. OK. Thanks, Venkatesh. And first of all, uh, thanks for this great opportunity. And I hope everyone who is listening to me, because these are tough times, that you are all safe and secure at, at, and healthy at the places wherever you are. I think the question is very interesting, Vankatesh, and I would start a little bit prior to the, the office part of it, because as we saw, and I think we generalized this term called now COVID economy, okay, which has actually changed the entire landscape of economy where we existed six months before or a year before versus where we are right now. And I think we heard from our leaders before, which is Ishita and everybody saying that digital transformation, and I'll just quote what um, Microsoft CEO Satya said, that the 20 years of digital transformation was seen actually in two months, that how people have adopted quickly to the digital transformation part of it. So what we started at Microsoft about a, a year back is what we said that we will skill 25 million people globally around digital skilling part of it. Of course, India is part of that. And beyond the office part of it, Venkatesh, which we just spoke about, we did research along with LinkedIn to figure out that which are the top 10 jobs which are there in the industry on which the people need to be trained or youth need to be trained. And I also see a question in the chat box which talks about that. How are we thinking about skilling those millions of youth, right? Or the people who will no more be on the manual jobs and coming to the digital jobs. So when we identified the 10 jobs, uh, top 10 jobs, then one of them was, let's say, financial analyst, then other was data analyst, the graphics designer, the marketing, all of that, right? So to have those top 10 skills to be instilled into the students or the people, there are learning paths which are completely free of cost right now available, which students can go and actually access that. 
okay and in each of those part there are very very low cost certifications also which are available for the students so they can go and do that part now let me pick up one example when we spoke about the power bi which you just said that power bi and and the power apps kind of an platform so i think power bi for everybody here for their benefit it's a it's a reporting platform it's an insight platform you will be very surprised to know that india is actually a number one or number two country actually in using excel sheets we use so many excel sheets okay because from day to day to small businesses to every youth we do use those so if you have power bi you have lot more to extract out of that excel that what real insight is there right and from the 10 courses which i spoke about one of the course is about data analyst okay and that course of data analyst actually enables the youth or the students whoever is listening to this conversation to first understand the excel the basics of excel basic of data analyst and power bi and even tableau which is of course a competitor product but we believe in skilling right now so it also talk about the that how do you use all of these tool to become better data analyst part of it now coming uh, towards the office part of it vectish which you asked in terms of collaboration tools as i call them which could be microsoft office in this case that i think in our mind is a very basic skill which means whichever path you take out of those top 10 jobs that's like a prerequisite that you need to learn and imagine in a world where we are all digital right now right which means if i don't know how to use the digital collaboration tools then i it will be impossible for me to work so that's a very very prerequisite and there is a entire course around digital collaboration tool and it actually goes beyond microsoft okay so not only microsoft but we also have on our site training for zoom for webex people can just learn it okay so those digital collaboration tools are are a mandate and then those 10 learning jobs as i said i think there's only one more aspect i will add that we all are speaking a lot and we spoke a lot about tech skills i think there are a lot many soft skills also which people would require because one of the thing we were discussing that maybe in digital world the number one skill you might need is also communication skill that how do you communicate so do you acquire those kind of skills right so those are also part of this entire curriculum and i'll just touch upon the last part which is along with all of this what students will learn in learning part there is also a program from microsoft called career coach okay i'll put it all the links on the chat that career coach link actually allows you to pick a coach in your career there are few people who have volunteered who are mentor so if students want to really learn about them then they can just go on to go on to this uh, platform and learn about that and last 30 second on the power apps i think most of us have heard about low code no code kind of and conversations which are now happening which means if every business person have to start coding and have to learn about coding then there is this platform power platform available which allows you to do coding without actually knowing the coding so business users can do so in my mind these skills will really enable people who are actually now on not on manual jobs but going to the digital jobs that how they can get equipped with each of these skills and of course there are many programs where these students can be really absorbed So I'll just take a pause now, Vaktesh. I hope I answered and what you were looking for. Yes, absolutely. And in fact, I'm ha- also happy to share when Satya Nadal announced the uh, GSI Global Skilling Initiative uh, because of the pandemic and engaging with the communities. India was the first country, and NSDC was the first organization to go ahead and partner with them. Uh, we took a mandate of skilling a lakh youth, and then we took another mandate of skilling a one lakh uh, girl children, especially in STEM campuses. And we have executed a fantastic pilot with the Andhra Pradesh State Skill Mission. Now we are extending that to other state skill missions, and we have seen a great uh, uh, intake and interest among students to get digitally skilled. I think you touched upon that in your conversation. So that's a uh, great initiative, and of course, uh, for all those. Uh, you know who are looking at availing this uh, geeta would gonna put that on the chat box and moving on further to ruchi anand from linkedin so uh, uh, welcome ruchi to the panel discussion uh, you know before uh, this we engaged with linkedin and linkedin learning in a big way 
we announced that partnership. We have seen a lot of people take those courses uh, through the eSkill India and LinkedIn learning platform integration. So I want uh, you to touch upon in the current times, because you track LinkedIn learning actively, uh, it's a massive program. What are the top courses students are taking and uh, you know where industry is looking at from an employability standpoint also? Okay. Uh, thank you, Venkatesh, and you know, thank you for this opportunity. It's, it's, I'm so happy to be here, and I'm glad to go after Gita. In fact, Gita's uh, made it a little easier for me because she's, she's covered, um, you know, quite a bit around um, the joint initiative Microsoft and LinkedIn have done with, you know, in terms of expanding the reach. And um, I'll probably yes go a little deeper. And also, since you spoke about Venkatesh, uh, our partnership with NSDC, which we actually got into last year, and um, the, the, I just take a step back to say what really happened was we saw on LinkedIn, as per LinkedIn data, Indian professionals with digital skills uh, were 20% more likely and more in demand professionals and to get a job, uh, you know, than those who didn't have. So that's why with NSDC, we, we actually unlocked a lot of courses to improve um, and as well give access to digital skills to um, to people who are coming on the e-skill platform. So essentially, that was 140 courses with 10 learning paths. And it covered a range of skills from entry level literacy to very advanced product based skills. And what we've seen to your point, um, you know, the adoptions being very high and not just with this partnership. In fact, I just wanted to also share what Gita shared uh, where Satya had this vision of 25 million. In fact, uh, Microsoft and LinkedIn globally were able to actually reach 30 million learners and in India about 3 million um, learners. And that's where we've also seen a huge adoption um, in terms of the top courses that we saw it's very much aligned to where we've been seeing demand for you know the the top in demand jobs so essentially because of the digital transformation we saw a lot of demand for uh, specialized engineering artificial intelligence cyber security data science and uh, that's why the top three in demand jobs were you know, software engineering specialists, um, automation test analysts, or .NET developers. And we saw that the top courses that were being taken were also around the learning paths of how to be a software developer or a data scientist. Now, I want to also share that the top five soft skills, because um, that is another very um, key component uh, to actually be employable, be ready, uh, as, as well as be successful. Uh, what we saw an uptick was in you know, learning paths like creative thinking, problem solving, time management, leadership, and effective communication. So these were the top five um, soft skills that we saw. And hard skills, like I said, were, you know, data science, AI, even, in fact, we saw a lot of uptake on uh, marketing, SEO marketing, digital marketing, uh, financial management um, as well. Um, so essentially what, we, what we've been seeing is that um, there's an equal balance and um, not just soft skills, as part of our partnership with NSDC, some of the courses that we've actually unlocked is also around how to be, how to apply to the right job. How do you have digital, um, you know, body language? How do you prepare for an interview? Um, all the basics of what even Gita spoke about, you know, uh, how do you use Teams? How do you use Zoom? How do you actually get ready um, in, in this virtual world? So um, those were a few of the things. And uh, maybe if, if required, I can also just add, uh, what we've been seeing is the top industries that, that are growing um, and hiring the most. We're seeing, apart from, of course, uh, this uh, uplift on the digital side, we're seeing you know, finance, corporate services, manufacturing, healthcare, and hardware networking being their top five dominant industries where we've been seeing a huge surge in terms of jobs uh, over the last few months. That's an interesting uh, insight uh, coming from you, Ruhi, uh, Ruchi, Anand. I think this is uh, one of the areas where people look up to LinkedIn as a very strong platform, not only for networking and jobs, but also getting insights of what's happening in the industry. And the way you've put forward, Ruchi, is uh, uh, very interesting for our audience. Uh, we will also, again, come back to you uh, to know a little bit more about some of the initiatives. Moving on uh, now to Saurabh uh, from Scalar. Uh, as Ruchi leaves us with interesting insights about the interesting courses which are in demand, uh, you are actively in touch with students. Uh, you are also looking at uh, improving the content and the curriculum and uh, you know, in, in, engage with the uh, academic partners to bring them at par with the industry standards. Uh, Scalar has been doing fabulous work. 
and they raised a lot of money from Sequoia Capital. Apart from this, that makes you feel happy also. So, you know, with all these things, how are you engaging with educational institutions to fill the gap? And where do you think the gaps are? Sure, uh, Venkatesh, I would, I would basically break it down into two separate elements, right? One is the gap around curriculum, the primary content that is being delivered. And the second around the mode of delivery, right? Uh, the industry, when it comes to software development or the IT industry, the industry is very fast moving, right? Every month, every year, there are new technologies, there are new languages, that there are new ways of building efficient software. Uh, as our uh, tools are getting bigger, our audiences are getting bigger. A few decades back, it was primarily enterprise. Now we are primarily consumer. Uh, it is very hard for the institutional curriculum to stay updated. No, primarily because the speed is very agile and our institutes are uh, relatively slower. They take some time to uh, update themselves, they take some time to revise curriculums and things like those. The second thing is it's very, uh, it's not extremely practical when it comes to delivery, right? Uh, for instance, back in 2018, we were working very closely with Uber, Uber India, and we were helping them hire from colleges. And uh, we basically went with a proposal that you currently go to colleges that are IITs, IIITs, NITs, etc. If you hired through Scalar or interview bit, uh, we would basically open the entire pool to you, the entire university institute pool to you. And you might find people who are not from IITs, IIITs, and they might do well. They agreed. Uh, we went ahead. And we were able to hire a lot of guys for, from tier 3, tier 2 unknown colleges for Uber. When we went back and started talking to them, they said, Ki, you know, I had a guide. I had my elder brother who's already working in Microsoft. I already have my elder brother who's working in LinkedIn. I already have my elder brother who's working in Uber. And they keep guiding us on where to get this relevant content and how to prepare, right? So that's what we put together in Scalar. One, a very, very up-to-date curriculum that we keep revising on a very frequent basis that makes sure that we are never outdated. Uh, Every scaler engineer is very proficient from day one. A lot of these companies don't want to invest a lot of time in training. The cost per engineer, per hire, per uh, team member is very high. They want people who can come in from day one and be extremely productive. Uh, so we tied all of that together. You have a six months to nine months curriculum that makes you expert. And then you also get a mentor who is like your elder brother, who catches up with you every 15 days, makes sure that you are on track keeps taking occasional mock interviews, looks at your progress, looks at your goals, does some course correction wherever required. In that way, we have been able to build a very strong package. We have been able to deliver more than 2,000 students over the last two years. And we are going to scale it up. A lot of that money that we just spoke about is going to go into scaling, making sure that we are able to take it to 12,000, 15,000, 20,000 engineers per year. So yeah, that's, uh, that's how we are tackling this problem. Uh, we will keep evolving as time goes. Good. I can also see that uh, there are a lot of uh, new age online schools which are kicking off. Uh, Scalar, of course, is a leader in that domain. And then you have Maasai, Newton, and there are international schools across in US. In fact, I was talking to one uh, which was based in Indonesia called uh, CoLearn uh, yesterday. Yes. So there are very, very interesting formats that have been tested. So the next next decade would be way different than what our STEM campuses and colleges have been in the past. So there would be a lot of disruptions there. And hopefully these should you know, bridge the gap between the industry and the academia. So moving on to an, another interesting uh, you know, founder you know, and uh, the person who has actually built something around agriculture, which is quite interesting, Mohit. Uh, Mohit Jain recently, uh, again, I can see a lot of smile on his face. He raised a lot of capital from Better Capital, Titan Capital, all of them joined him. So he's doing some interesting work of curating online courses uh, for and helping uh, you know people in different sectors. He started off with agriculture. The main aim is to turn them as entrepreneurs. That's the core thing which I really loved uh, when I spoke to him. So Mohit, uh, would you like to touch upon your interface, your organization, how you built and the demand, and especially you know your idea of turning people into entrepreneurs with your platform? Sure. Thanks, thanks, Venkatesh, for having me on today's platform, and uh, like really looking forward to it. So basically, why we started Rocket Skills was the concept was pretty simple. We wanted to build something for the ambitious middle India and uh, help them learn new skills in the traditional industri industries. So till now, as everyone has been talking about, mostly all the edtech has been focused on digital skills, which is right in a fashion. But uh, we wanted to approach those traditional industries and 
bring the new technologies to different peer set of people who are ambitious enough and want to start their own business and you also identified that a lot of indians want to build dhanda a small low investment profitable business which they can start and scale easily and like instead of doing a job they can get a healthy uh, income from uh, their small business so that was our main motive and we as uh, uh, venkatesh rightly pointed out we have started with agriculture we have courses in different domains uh, like poultry farming hydroponics poly house fish farming then we have mushroom farming is really famous even housewives are these days signing up for mushroom farming because if you have a small room a 10 by 10 feet room in your house uh, and if you want to start with a low investment you can start it with as low investment as 5000 rupees and you can start generating some income for your household and you can even contribute your time so it is a very noble cause and people are taking it up people are very interested and kind of covid also helped us uh in this movement because the timing for us was very right we started last year people realized that agriculture or the small businesses as an industry won't go away uh, big corporations had to lay off people uh, pe- jobs that people thought were permanent weren't there anymore so people started to like as a government uh, had also started an initiative atmanirbhar bharat so our ethos kind of align with that uh, precisely and we also want to build financially independent indians and that is why we have started with agriculture and we'll soon be moving on to newer categories like home based manufacturing financial services or fashion and beauty so our platform is pretty simple we clear uh, all the small business owners doubts so we also observe that people are not able to get as saurabh also explained in like people who are able to achieve they get the right mentoring at the right stages and people are able to help everyone out so that is what we do we get the best industry experts in these t- different domains and connect them structure the knowledge and help uh, the new business owners who are starting up get them mentoring and support in a structured fashion so we also are kind of trying to uh, build a new product around it like cohort based courses these days are gaining a lot of popularity so scalar is also i i am assuming runs on cohort based courses so we are also trying to bring these to traditional industries we have six month programs and so what difference we observed was that we also needed because these are not digital skills they needed practical experience so getting everyone in one place was is difficult especially in covid it was not possible so we have also innovated on some products and are now sending out starter kits like which are mini- miniature versions of all these different industries like if you want to start a fish farm you need a 20000 liter tank so instead we ship them 1000 liter tanks which they can set it up in their backyard and start doing it understand what is what can go wrong and then after uh, like uh, understanding the science the nitty gritties of the whole concept and the uh, category then they can take the jump and start the business in a proper fashion so we are still very early in the stage we have just trained 10000 people till now we started last year and it has been going good uh, like we are getting a very good response and uh, like we are very glad that we make a positive difference every day that helps me sleep at night and uh, so like we are uh, like would love to interact with everyone if someone in the audience has any specific question is connects with our idea and our mission and wants to contribute to it then would love to interact with everyone you can easily find me anywhere and uh, so that's all on my part venkatesh I'll, I'll, I, i guess i'll end over there yeah thank, thank thanks uh, mohit and we look forward for some interesting insights as and also uh, your journey of empowering entrepreneurs is a great journey we wish you all the best there uh, so in, we are at 338 and i think uh, we have few minutes more left so quickly i want to run the panelists uh, with one more set of questions uh, and then maybe if we have time we will take some questions from the audience uh, you know we're starting again back with uh, ishita you know ishita can you touch upon uh, you know the mentoring process mentoring is an extremely important and india needs a lot of mentors uh, how how are these uh, mentors uh, you know mobilizing the mentors is done uh, at niti ayog and if you can touch upon that that would be exciting for our audience sure um no i think mentoring is an extremely important part of the student journey or uh, in case of a startup with a startup journey 
what we have done is we've created an army of about 5,000 plus mentors of change that we call them. Um, and all these 5,000 plus mentors of change work on a pro bono basis with the schools that are allocated to them in their areas. Uh, some bit of mentoring is also done online remotely. Um, we constantly engage with uh, the school students, uh, you know, the ADLs, and we have more than 8,000 ADLs established in the, across the country so far, including places like uh, Jammu, Kashmir, and Ladakh, and Andaman, and Nicobar. And there are 5,000 plus mentors which are working with these students. Uh, so just to tell you how we engage with all of them all the time is uh, to uh, very quickly talk about a recently concluded summer tinkering uh, boot camp that we had done uh, in place of a community day, which was not we could not do because of the COVID uh, pandemic. So we had done a summer boot camp for the kids, and the idea was that all the students had to launch a digital product based business over a nine week journey, where the where you know they had to learn the skills, the digital skills, they had to design the product, they had to create a business model, they had to create a marketing plan, and at the end of it, create set up an online store, and finally. It ended with pitching it, pitching their business to mentors and uh, industry partners. That event saw the participation of more than 9,000 school students, out of which about half of them were girl child. Um, so more than 4,000 of them were girl children. So 50 plus sessions um, taken by industry leaders and mentors. There were 30 plus special skills that were taught. There were 680 plus students that were actually constantly with these students over a period of nine weeks to be uh, to help them improve upon their project and their businesses. This was the, the, the sessions were done in more than six languages with one goal which was to create job creators in the future. Um, similarly, another uh, you know uh, annual event that we do is the ADL Marathon. Is a flagship event of uh, at uh, the innovation mission for, uh, for the eight years, where uh, the top 200 projects, the students' projects are given internships with our industry partners and uh, they are connected with mentors to be able to take their pro uh, project to a product level or a prototype level. And given them future uh, further training to become entrepreneurs and, uh, uh, you know, uh, think seriously about. Uh, so, uh, mentors, I think, are an important part of the entire journey without which I think students don't get that required hand holding and the encouragement to take their projects forward. And uh, we, uh, on a monthly basis, recognize our mentors of change. Uh, we announce their names and we put it on the social media to be able to uh, you know, recognize their efforts and uh, on the work that they're doing along with the students. That's nice, uh, Ishita. I think. Uh, okay, can just one more minute because I'll take another 30 seconds. All sure, the, sure. All the participants who are on all the opportunity with us, I would encourage them to join the Mentor of Change program and contribute to the students and contribute to this innovation revolution that we're creating. So thank you so much. Thanks, Ishita. That was really nice. And I think. Uh, Mobilizing mentors and engaging them is very critical uh, in your journey. And you guys are doing great stuff there. And even the faculties and uh, teachers who are there on the platform today can reach out to Ishita uh, for to know further to engage as mentors. So moving on to Bhaskar, uh, to you, you know, you are planning to engage with educational institutions. Uh, how many institutions are going, uh, you planning to engage in phase one? Would these be engineering institutions in interest of our audience who are there? And, uh, you know, how are you going to engage with them? Thank you, Vintesh. I actually th thought I'll not be able to get the second round. Uh, I bestowed on the very, very important point in the first conversation. See, um, the current capacity that we see in India from our partner organizations, I'm talking about, we call it as G10, G16, which is basically your TCS, Accenture, Capgemini, Wipro, Infosys, all the system integrators who are uh, based out of India. Most of these guys, uh, while, while their, their uh, base is in different country, but the resources are in India. So how do they get uh, you know, talent from the market? There are only two ways, right? So one is from campus, second is from lateral hire. From the campus part of it is what we are currently engaged with the partner organizations. 
who in turn are currently working with the education institutions. And if you look at the pyramid of resources that they would need, they need foundational, intermediary, and expert. Foundational is the, is the pyramid that we are trying to address. We currently have close to about 22,000 resources. I'm talking about 22,000 service now practitioners working in India across all the partners. And our current visibility for 2022 is between four to 5,000 additional resources that they're talking about. And that's the biggest problem that we currently have and the challenge that we have. And a guy like me would see that as an opportunity because we always, um, in India, um, we, we make the statement, right? Um, the problem is not about unemployment. The problem is about employability. I think this is the right forum where I can provide that solution of getting the, the, the skills relevant to the industry, especially with service now skills where they can get trained and certified. So the model that we currently have, uh, Vintage, is uh, we're currently working with the uh, partner organizations who in turn have an empaneled colleges across the country. Each of the partners have given us a list of about 40 to 50 engineering colleges, both tier one and tier two across the country again. We plan to uh, work closely with these ed education institutions. However, it would be with the partner organizations because we don't have the bandwidth to go and talk to every education institution. And that is one of the chapter where we were looking at how do we collaborate and partner with NSDC as well. So uh, the model is um, the partner organizations would get in touch with the education institutions, the engineering colleges, give us the, the list of students who need to be trained and certified. And uh, uh, right now, TCS has given us a list of about 1,000 students who are uh, hired as part of their 2022 plan uh, across the country. And the, the training for these 1,000 students would start from second week of September. We have a 25-day capsule where we teach them uh, basics of service now, fundamentals, they move on to ITSM fundamentals, which is IT service management. They also move on to application developer. The entire training is invested by ServiceNow and it is absolutely at no cost for the student because we really would want to, to develop that ecosystem in the, in, in the marketplace so that ServiceNow certified talent is available for our partner organization. Thank you. That's nice, uh, Bhaskar. Good to hear. In interest of time, we have uh, less, you know, close to six, seven minutes now, uh, less than that. So moving on to uh, Geeta from Microsoft. Quickly, if you can touch upon your Microsoft Viva platform. It's a very interesting platform. It could be of interest to our audience. Of course, you can talk a little bit, and then you can also share the link on the chat box for individuals uh, to get onto it. Uh, to you, Geeta. Sure, sure. So I think Viva brings a little bit different spin because I think everyone of us here is speaking about that before we get into jobs, right? There's so much emphasis on skill and you have student mindset in a student community, which is very enthusiastic about learning. But I think the statistics shows that once you are employed, right? the ROI of learning employers are not getting and also the interest and investment by the individuals in reskilling themselves have gone down because they don't find learning very engaging. They find learning as a as a parallel track to their jobs, which is sometime more forcefully it needs to be done, right? So what we planning to do with Viva, so Viva platform, which we launched, it has one of the module, which is what we call as Viva learning platform. It, it actually brings the learning within an organization from every part of the organization, be it organization using Coursera, using LinkedIn courses, having their own courses, everything together at one place. Mm -hmm. And that too in the collaboration tool, which is, let's say for me, it is Teams. So within Teams, I will see that what are the various courses which are available to me. And the courses will be very relevant to the job I want to do and the next job I want to do and how do I want to reskill. And it also has a little bit community learning kind of a thing because when you know one of your colleague in the same profession is learning something, then that's like a community learning that you say that, okay, I would also want to learn, right? So Viva actually will bring broadly a cultural shift into the organization and into the mindset of the people that once you are in job, how do you continue to reskill yourself given the speed at which technology changes and be engaged and stay invested? Because if you don't invest in learning, 
i think very soon the growth opportunity in career gets very very stagnated so that's all the viva platform is about i'll paste the link for people to just explore at a learning community level vankish there is also another platform called microsoft uh, learning for student platform i'll just paste the link for that also sure. so both can be availed sure uh, thank you so much geeta uh, for that insight and moving to ruchi anand uh, you know uh, there is lot of positive uh, feedback uh, i personally also heard through our state skill missions about some of your linkedin coaching and mentoring sessions which you are doing especially with a focus of improving tier 2 tier 3 tier 4 campuses uh, maybe if you can touch upon a little bit in interest of time and also if you have some links which you can paste that would be nice sure yeah uh, thanks antesh i'll just quickly give an overview so essentially as part of linkedin's vision which is to create economic opportunity for every member of the global workforce uh, our social impact team thrives on the mission of how do we create uh, co create connections for job seekers facing barriers with resources and networks to meaningful careers and that's how linkedin coaches as a program uh, is a program that focuses on professionals which face who face like i said systematic barriers and have little or no familiarity with linkedin or how to build their um, you know professional networks and this includes a mentoring component to it so uh, what we've been doing is we've been partnering we have globally a lot of non profit partnerships where we with the with the partners of course where we provide grants and career development resources uh, uh, so that we can you know be able to bridge that gap and because we've been able to go digital um, and move away from you know in person coaching sessions to actually take it to large scale webinar formats we've been able to really in the last one and a half years reach a lot of scale reach a lot of colleges reach uh, students across tier 2 tier 3 cities like you said and not just that in fact we've also been um, working with um, some of our partners who are working with women to bring them back into the workforce to your earlier point really you know to realize that uh, vision as well as well as working with veterans so um, these are the kind of you know uh, partnerships that we've been doing in fact um, just as i sum up just to tell you that globally we've been able to we're working with about 118 non profits and we've been able to reach about 1.2 million job seekers uh, over over about 500 plus workshops so um, and also in the less than one year we've seen where we had only 10% of our employees be able to contribute their time we have over 40% of our employees who are now volunteers and are are really coaching um, you know you know people across um, across these networks so that's quite yeah. incredible in fact the kind of work linkedin is doing uh, either working with non profits or you know uh, bridging the gaps between industry academia i think it, this is something a kind of an uh, interest for our audience also uh, who would love to reach out to uh, ruchi anand then probably have these in your campuses and colleges uh, it's so exciting to hear uh, the work that linkedin is doing and now moving on to saurabh uh, you know i would like three skills which are extremely important in the current era uh, you know especially from a stem audience perspective because your platform is stem focused uh, mm -hmm. which are the three courses or skills which are highly relevant in the current day world sure so uh, i would primarily focus primarily on problem solving because the world is evolving very fastly uh, your languages can change your frameworks can change if you are good at problem solving no matter what problem is thrown at you you would be able to go about building something for it the second is design, design thinking or product thinking, because again, you don't want to solve something for the moment, but you want to think about how the end user is going to use it, how the customer is going to work with it, right? And the third is data science and machine learning, because again, a lot of low code, no code solutions are coming up. A lot of people want to build solutions that can be uh, used by others. Uh, you want to build frameworks that others can use, libraries and things like those, right? Uh, I'm going to keep it very crisp and short. I'm just going yeah. to maybe paste some links in the chat. Uh, about our programs that uh, data science and a forever program that we have created. Uh, just lifelong learning is what we are all about. Sign up and just keep learning forever. Thank you. Thank you, Saurabh. That was nice. And uh, uh, moving on to Mohit, uh, one key message for all young entrepreneurs or would be entrepreneurs who are in campuses. Uh, what's your message, Mohit, uh, to them? uh i think i have no one to give a message but yeah i think people should just take a leap of faith uh it's just that simple like don't overthink and like nothing to lose most people don't have that much of things to lose i think they can just start start it out try and see if it works or not 
Absolutely. Yeah. I think, you know, f- fear is one thing. Fear of failure is one thing. As Indians, we have to co- overcome. And especially in the student communities, I have seen uh, if we can celebrate, start celebrating failure, you know, a lot of things can change. And that mindset requirement is not only with the students, with teachers, parents and everyone, you know, because yeah. start- as startups, uh, you know, we always test the fear. Uh, we overcome the fear. And of course, in that process, we fail, but we again get up and move towards success. And that's a mindset which is very important. Uh, you know, in, you know, we are already fa- falling short of time and there are a few questions. We will take the questions offline and we'll get back to the audience. And uh, hopefully we had a very nice uh, interaction. I think the key theme uh, in bringing this panel together I would say is collaboration. We have Niti Aayog, we have industry players like Microsoft, LinkedIn, and ServiceNow, and then we have budding entrepreneurs and startup founders. I think if we all collaborate together, uh, and all the uh, you know industry, academia, so-called gaps can be filled in, and we move towards a successful and a bright India. Wishing you all a great Independence Day tomorrow, and thanking each and every audience who's been here today, and also the panelists who have taken out time to share their insights. Thank you, everyone. Hope you have a great day and a great weekend. Thank you. 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 Thank you